On this hunt, I'm heading into the wilds of southeastern Arizona to chase mountain lions. This is probably the most difficult place we could go to try and catch a lion. Yeah, it's just, right. yeah, just tough to get around in here. It's all the lion's advantage. The odds are against us, even with two of the best lion trackers and some of their trustiest dogs at our side. Hey, let me flick. Something happened up here. You guys got to turn it on. Bad. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. It's about sustenance and survival. It's about connecting to the land. It's about the purity of the challenge. It's about life. In each and every one of us, there is a primal instinct to hunt and consume. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. Here in southeastern Arizona, the Galero Mountains rise up from the surrounding desert as a sky island mountain chain of jagged outcroppings, sharp peaks, and sheer cliffs. I've come here to catch a mountain lion, something that I've never done. I've eaten more mountain lions than I've seen in the wild something I cannot say about any other North American game animal. My three sightings have been just glimpses, seconds long. I'll be hunting with two of the best lion hunters in Arizona, Floyd Green and his hunting partner of 30 years, Joe Mitchell. These guys are committed and experienced hunters. If anyone's gonna give me a true Western lion hunt, it's these two. By a long shot, the best way to have a successful mountain lion hunt is to rely on specially trained dogs that are capable of trailing the scent of a fast-moving cat. Floyd and Joe have personally trained their own dogs through years of hunting. And while these aren't the kind of pups you might snuggle up to on a couch, they do have a fanatical devotion to their owners. Over the years, you know, as many as 10, 15 lions a year come right out of this little region right here where we're at. All right. The Camp Stool Ranch where we're hunting is a working cattle operation that took a major hit from lions last spring. This ranch last year lost between 40 and 50 head of calves. $1,000 a head these days, that's really hard on a family. Oh, imagine, man. As I said, I know next to nothing about these animals, so Floyd gives me a quick lesson on spotting sign. Of particular importance is distinguishing a dog track from a lion track. A dog always steps off and his foot leaves the soil disturbed. I got and a cat will step straight up and straight down. But isn't the cat track quite a bit wider than the dog track? On the front, you bet. Wider than long. Yep. And then on a cat track, the, the, the distinguishing factor of a, of a cat versus a, a dog is on the heel pad, there's three lobes on a cat, so your toes would be like this. Till you see those lobes, you just don't know for sure. That heel pad is what will be the determining factor for whether it's a cat or a dog. See this rocky knob up in front of us right here? Yeah. Lions tend to, when they travel through the country, that's like a magnet for one. Really? It's just a cat thing. They gotta go, they'll climb up on top of it, they'll go lay by it, you know, they, they may bed down near it, but it'll always be some sort of structure like that. Now what about this guy right here? It's an older track, and I can't really make it out real well, but it certainly has the characteristics, that round front end and, and everything we're looking for. It's old enough where it's it, not interesting. Yeah, it's a day or two old, it's, it's kinda, it's old news. As luck would have it, we come across evidence of a relatively fresh kill. Oh, here, down here. Oh, there you go. Oh, man, a little buck. So they clean it right up. Huh? Yeah, there's not much left. Most of these lions consume about 40 to 50 animals a year. Really? You can imagine how 10, 20 of them in a small area just has a huge impact. Yeah. It's funny to think at some point very recently there was a live lion clamped onto this thing. <laughs> it's a positive sign that lions have been working the area, and it's got me feeling good about tomorrow's hunt. How many lions have you guys treed in your lives? It'd be between 500 and 1,000. Combined Combine together? Yeah. So you started chasing when you were 15 years old? 15 to 16 years old. Just figuring it out on your own? Oh, we were, yeah, we, no one taught me. Explain bare ground lion hunt. 
Well, bare ground line hunting would be what we're doing here where there's no snow on the ground and you're just hunting them on rocks and dirt. And yeah. you don't have any real identifiable way to know how old the track is. And you probably hunt eight to 10 days for every lion you catch. How did it come to be that like lion hunting is your favorite thing? You know, for me, it's it's probably one of the only things in life that I really didn't feel like I ever mastered. Every day you get up in the morning and it's a whole new challenge. It's never like you feel like you have it in the bag. The part that we enjoy the most is watching our dogs trail. I mean, when we trail a lion for like three or four hours and we're actually with them, yeah. and you see, you see your pups come on and start the cold trail like that, that's what gets it for us, because uh, we're dog trainers. Whoever the greatest lion hunter in the world is, is actually just a great dog trainer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not going to catch all lions. As long as your dogs give 100% and they're trying their best, that's enough for us. Yeah. And in the days, I mean, if you caught a lion every day, it'd be easy. It's the challenge. The lion's like the cake at the end. On the surface, lion hunting seems like a straightforward enterprise. A pack of dogs chases a cat up a rock pile or a tree, and the hunter shoots it out. In our case, with a 357 revolver because of its easy portability and knockdown power. But as I hunt with these guys around the desert for the next several days, I learn that there's a lot more to it than that. That dog that's barking has the lion trap. He's on it. What we'll do is we'll go right to where they barked last and look yep. for a lion track. OK. You got to pick up the lion's direction to travel right. it. Each day starts the same way. First, you figure out which way you want to go. Have you got one? Uh, what do you think when you look at that right there? Boy, it looks like a lion track. You can see how flat it is. Yeah, it's also good. And everything else is all tore up around it. Then we're going the right way. Once you find some evidence of a lion's passage, you rely on the dogs to keep you on track. You think they're on something or no? You know, they're, you should heard her open it there. Yeah, she, she just got the track right there. It's just a patience game at this point. You, you know, lion hunting's hours and hours of this, what we call cold trailing it. Just working the track, trying to overtake wherever it's spending the day. Yep. This dog knows there's something happened here, but the, the porous rock, there's a lot of volcanic rock here, a lot of pores in it. It holds those scent molecules better. <laughs> He likes, you see him licking everything and going nuts. You got to be impressed by the nose on these things. It takes years of experience to interpret what your dogs are telling you. We've hit a much better track over here. I would say this is definitely night old. Now, how the hell can you tell that? The dogs that are opening right now and the way they're acting. So you're just going by the level of excitement with the tail wagging. That energy, and then that Patches dog that I talked about, she's opening this really strong. So is uh, so is the Duke dog. Those are dogs I trust a lot. Uh -huh. like they don't go off on old cold sign. Right. The problem is the dogs are on and off tracks all day, and most of these tracks prove to be too old to do any good. We call this a big lose. Basically lost the track, and we've got to wait for them to sort it out. Some of these dogs have a track probably made yesterday, and some of them have the track coming in here. You just don't know who's got what, you know? So you really just got to let them work it out. What would be the longest you'd give dogs to work something out? I'll probably quite some time in here. Hours? It could be hours, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm learning that this takes a lot of patience. Man, those dogs are fired up, man. Still, I can't help but get excited every time the dogs pick up a new trail. That's got to be a good damn trail, man. Look at that. But even the seemingly hottest tracks can go cold on you. Now they're hung up. Now they're kind of milling around. Days and days pass, and we don't even see a lion. We aren't going to catch this one, so I'm going to go ahead and bring them on back down. Dogs out! I don't want to burn these dogs out on something we can't catch. Mountain lion hunting with hounds is one of the most controversial hunting methods and has been banned in a number of states. Basically, it's easy to convince people who've never laid eyes on a lion in their life that there's no challenge in hunting them with dogs. 
That couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, it's more challenging than most hunts I've been on, and I've been on some doozies. It requires not only a nuanced and detailed understanding of one's prey, but also a vast knowledge of dogs and topography that has accumulated over the course of hundreds and hundreds of hunt days. I tell you, man, I can't handle the amount of disappointment this entails. Every time they cut a cold track, you get all excited, and every time you just get dashed. It's like some dude keeps talking about giving you like a million dollars and changes his mind all the time. I'm emotionally spent. trip's been kind of messing with me a little bit. Coming out here, that lion was gotten in my head. Not only had I gotten a lion in my head, I had eaten that lion, and my kid had been taking naps on that lion's rug. Floyd and Joe aren't walking around shocked that we didn't get anything. I mean, they're kind of like, yeah, welcome to lion hunting. And these guys are great, man. I mean, they do this all the time. We're in a good spot. There's animals around here that have been killed by lions. Everybody's working hard. I mean, we're pounding the ground, but it's just not coming together. It's a big game animal. This is how you hunt them. It's not just like walking up and, you know, shooting stuff out of the tree. It's just not, man. It just feels like I haven't earned that moment yet. I'm coming to terms with the idea that this is gonna be something I'm gonna to have to devote significant amounts of time to. It's been three months since my first attempt at a mountain lion and I could not let it rest. So now I'm back again for round two, and we're now near the Apache National Forest in the extreme eastern part of Arizona. Many people regard this as the birthplace of bare ground lion hunting. It's one of Floyd and Joe's favorite, most productive springtime locations. But as you can see, a lot of this area burned last year in the Wallow Fire, and there's a mosaic of burnt patches out here, and this stuff is just full of ash and dust. There's a worry that if we get on a lion track and that lion comes through this stuff and the dogs try to scent trail it through here, it's gonna plug their noses up, they're not gonna like it, they're gonna lose the scent. Floyd and Joe have already called it that if we get a lion in this stuff, it's gonna be hard to hang on to them. Last year we came in here and this was the most game infested place I've ever been in my life. And that was before the burn came yeah, through. Yeah, before this burn was here. I'm just worried that, you know, if animals didn't get out of here, it spread so fast that they got trapped in and got burned up. Because I'm not seeing the, the amount of game that was in here. Every hunt starts somewhere. In this case, we climb into a narrow canyon because the presence of water and the steep walls make it an ideal travel route for lion food. In this case, bighorn sheep, mule deer, and javelina. There's your lion scratch. You think that's new? I didn't see it the other day. A scratch is a lion's way of marking territory. I only seen two scratches. <laughs> this is one of them. There's some elk droppings right now. Oh, that's good. So we see something this high. I didn't see this the other day. Well, it's good that there's a live lion in here. Yep. He's a big lion, too. His footprint's big. that level of enthusiasm, Joe. I like it. I we're on a track. See, I'm getting jaded, man, after our last trip. Like, it's just impossible for me to picture these dogs doing this and it turning into them chasing a freaking lion, man. You know what I mean? Over the next couple of days, we hit the area hard. Because I learned a lot about lion sign on our prior hunt, we're able to split up and cover more ground in search of a fresh track, but it's still a tough slot. I think a lion has come through this canyon. We 
picked up a track hours ago. Now it sounds like they're picking up a trail again up here. But this is the old, I mean, if this lion was through here last night, this is still an old trail, but they've been on it for miles now, two miles. And they've got it now. Maybe. Like before, this hunt is a frustrating series of stops and starts. Well, that right there is absolutely a line track. There's no doubt this thing is wider than it is long. It's wider than my fingers put together. Lobe, lobe, lobe. No toenails, big round wide track. That is a lion track, man, and that lion track is not old. But if there is a lion in here, it's staying two steps ahead of us. We just keep dealing with false alarms. Tell me something good, Floyd. Like when a young dog <laughs> thinks he's treed something he hasn't and gets all the other dogs excited over nothing. What you call false treed? Bad deal. It's becoming increasingly clear that this hunt is going to be a mirror image of our last hunt. There's a cub bear up in this ponderosa. Well, at least we chased something into a tree. one final push up a mountain on a decent trail. But as expected, the dogs have a hard time keeping the scent through the burns. How much of an impact do you think it has, this ash from the fire? It's almost shut us down. You know, the just the car, it's like a carbon filter almost. Yeah. You know, just all this suit and the dust, the ashes, everything makes it worse for them, but you know. Still, we press on and the dogs slowly reach the top. Eventually, we arrive at a rocky peak where a lion might very well be hiding. Baby, what you guys got? The lion was here. It's clear that the lion was certainly here at one time, but it's gone now and the trail has died out. Once again, we decide to pack it in. You know, we got all the way to the top here and it's lost that track in the burn, man. I mean, all that whole hillside just scorched, and it's just ash and dust. The dogs can't follow it. it. Just got away. This is a fair chase hunt, man. I mean, it's a tough hunt that requires a lot of skill and a lot of stamina. And if there's some point, you know, in hunting beyond food and sport and physical activity and connection to nature, it's that it teaches you just a lot of coping mechanisms and, and things that help you find success in other avenues of life. And I think that learning how to deal with disappointment and then getting up and hitting it again and again and again is valuable, you know? And for me, that's something I learned through hunting. And we'll keep going. But it's tough, man. I mean, it's just, you know, bare ground lion hunting. When it comes to lion hunting, you have to forget the notion that the moment of truth comes with the shot. Here the moment of truth plays out very slowly before you even see the animal. The moment of truth is the chase itself. Steve, you're turning into quite the lion hunter. Well, I was thinking earlier that I used to have about negative two tracks a day. 
you count false alarms. <laughs> I've got it up to where I'm averaging about zero because I'm finding one for every false alarm. That's right. They're averaging back out. <laughs> so. well, I think Joe will tell you this. We don't ever hunt with anybody that finds lion tracks and helps us like no. you have. No, not really. And we've really enjoyed hunting with you. I have to start plotting my return. <laughs> well, I sure hope you, you got to come back. I mean, we... There's no way I'm not going to, man. OK. Keep me posted. OK. Uh, one thing uh, I noticed about Floyd and Joe is that they never talk about killing a lion. Every morning, they wake up hopeful that we'll catch a lion. I believe that their word choice, to catch, puts the proper emphasis on what makes lion hunting great. It's an attempt to come face to face with a creature that is mysterious, an enigma. The title of a friend's book about mountain lions says a lot about these creatures. Beast of never, cat of God. They are still ghosts to me, still a mystery. So in some weird way, I'm almost glad we didn't kill one. This way, I can continue to cherish the beautiful unknowingness of the mountain lion. The mystery has not been shattered. But with that said, I will continue to chase them. Even if it takes me 10 trips to get one, I'll keep returning. It's human to love mysteries, more human to solve them.